Welcome everyone to our summer mini-sodes, Who Drank It First? Woohoo! This is normally the podcast, Who Ate It First? Normally. But this is the final episode of our summer special, Who Drank It First? Boop, boop. And I uh, hope everyone's been enjoying the episodes. Has anybody made anything that we have made? Yeah, let us know if you've made any of the drinks that we made. So this week, delving in to something that we've never delved into before. Is that correct? English? Delved into? Yeah. English is hard. But so is Portuguese, and I'm about to attempt some things. So <laughs> blanket apology with my pronunciation. Um, so I saw this on a menu. Well, I've seen it at a couple places. But most recently, when we went out to dinner for our anniversary a couple months ago, I saw it on there. And I was very tempted to get it, but I was also a little scared <laughs> because I had I didn't know a thing about it. Uh-huh. And I also can't pronounce it. So today we're actually going to make it and maybe we'll go back to that restaurant and try it someday. But today we're going to be making the caipirinha. And I, that is a correct pronunciation. Last week was wrong. I checked it and this is not correct. Whether I can uh, keep it up the whole episode, I don't know. Caipirinha? Caipirinha. 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 Yeah. This week we're making the caipirinha and people describe this Brazilian drink as a cup of summer, which I <laughs> Sorry, love that. Yeah. That just sounded really funny. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you know what I could use more of is some summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I don't want this drink anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is there a cup of winter that I can have instead? Oh, well, then that would be hot. Okay. Bad idea. Cup of fall time. Ooh, so that's a pumpkin meal. spice latte. Yeah. That's an easy one. Yes, <laughs> they did just bring back um, pumpkin spice cold brew in Disney World because they're doing the uh, Oogie Boogie Halloween party mm. and the uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party. Nice. They just started yesterday. Just, Logan, why do you know this? It's really dumb information. <laughs> I know. Okay. Because somebody's a Disney head. <sighs> It's just information that I like, and I just put it out there, and whoever wants to know, you're welcome. And if you don't want to know, you can fast forward. And I can't blame you. I have to blame myself, because I took you to Disney World the first time. And Honestly, that it's his fault. initiated everything. Honestly, it's your fault. You weren't even really into Disney that much until our trip. I mean, as a kid. I liked Disney as a kid. Yeah. But after our trip to Disney World, then you kept up with the information. Yeah. And never stopped. Because Disney is like the perfect place for a type A person, <laughs> especially with the new system on how you book stuff. Yeah. It's it's literally made for type A people. I mean, yeah, I appreciate it when we go because I have to do nothing. I just follow our schedule it's, and it's uh, so fun. have a good time. It's so great. And you get a blast out of gathering that information and making the schedule. I do. Anyway, people describe this as the Brazilian Cup of Summer. So let's see if it's true. And also, this is a slight teaser for our theme for season two coming up. Oh. October 3rd. Cue all the mean girls memes. <laughs> anyway, the caipirinha technically translates as little countryside drink. According to another website, they said it actually meant hillbilly. So, but I kind of like little countryside drink. I like that better. <laughs> let's go with that one. Got to take that translation with a grain of salt there. But it's made by muddling green lemons native to Brazil and mixing them with sugar and cachaza. And limes are used when these are not available. So we are not in Brazil. We don't have access to these. I think they're called limones. And they're tiny little limes, but they have a much different sort of citrus flavor. It's, a, it's like a mix of a lemon and a lime smaller um so the closest thing we have here is just a straight lime so of course everybody say it with me the history of the caipirinha is a little fuzzy we love it what we love it i know you're shocked <laughs> everyone is shocked so it's thought to have originated in parate sao paulo brazil the caipirinha is no longer just Brazil's national drink, but has now become a great classic cocktail around the world. And bar teachers typically teach it in their intro to cocktail making classes. So the history of it is 
Some believe it was initially made as a medicine to ease the effects of the Spanish flu towards the end of World War I. So the original recipe was cachaza, green lemon, honey, and garlic. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I hate it. Why? <laughs> Why? No. I don't know. I don't know. Back back in the day of weird remedies, they put garlic in stuff. I mean, garlic is very good for you. I don't really want to drink it, though. Yeah. That doesn't sound fun. It's a no for me, fam. <laughs> <laughs> the green lemon was used for its high concentration of vitamin C. Cachaza contained the alcohol needed to sort of speed that absorption of the vitamins for the sick person. And um, then the garlic is just a natural. I actually don't know what garlic does. But sometimes somewhere someone decided to replace the honey and garlic with sugar and ice. <laughs> You know what would be a great replacement for garlic? (laughs) Ice. (laughs) That's the same thing, right? If we're taking it this way, (laughs) then it's even grosser because that means this elixir with the garlic was room temperature. Yeah. Or maybe hot. (laughs) I I know, but like, (laughs) all right, honey to sugar, fine, right? A garlic to ice. (laughs) There's there's a disconnect there, Well, somebody was just like, that's nasty. (laughs) Joe, you take that out. That's Bro, disgusting. Bro, what are you doing? Like, get that garlic out of here. Put some ice in it. <laughs> make it actually taste like something. Yeah. Also, it's hot. That's disgusting. Yeah. Make like, this cold. Cool this drink down. <laughs> hey, cool this, this is- business down. <laughs> um, <laughs> the second theory is some people actually believe the cocktail was created as a showpiece of the 19th century. Rich farmers in Sao Paulo would throw soirees and create the drinks as a way to present local goods on their island. So these um, green lemons and this cachaza, it's a very different type of spirit. I'll talk about it in a second. But they were supposedly showing this off to people like, look what we got. Mm, Doesn't this taste good? (laughs) I don't know. Other versions of the story point towards the slave traders from Europe who would drink the caipirinha on the boats back to Portugal in order to prevent scurvy, because we all know that limes prevent scurvy because of their high vitamin C content. Or it's also possible that the drink was created by the enslaved peoples on the sugarcane fields because they were looking for a way to use the cachaza that they were harvesting. And despite the abundance of stories, there's not one that's been able to be claimed as fact um it kind of seems like the world war one sickness remedy is the most prevalent on the blogs that i read very few were talking about the other two so but i did find those and i just wanted to mention it but we aren't exactly sure what the truth is but regardless the caipirinha is the national drink of Brazil and very popular worldwide nowadays. So however it got here, it's here. We're here. We're making it. It's very popular. People love these. All right. How do you make it? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't think that was part of our stuff that we do, but it is. I'm going to tell you this history and go, I don't know. Okay, bye. I don't know how to make it. This See you is, later. Yeah. <laughs> Just See, this kidding. is why we do the uh, making it park. So you get a full, a well-rounded presentation. Right. And I feel like I'm more informed with this drink now. Yeah. So now, now you, know you want to make it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to take one lime because we're in the United States and we only can use the limes. Okay. And we're going to take one and we're going to cut it into wedges. Where do we get this? Uh, lime? <laughs> where did we get the recipe from <laughs> sorry i was like do, do you want a lime tree in the backyard do you want to go pick one no. or the grocery store dude you didn't mention <laughs> our resource for the recipe we got our recipe today from the educated barfly we really like him he did multiple variations of this recipe this is one specifically we're gonna take one fresh lime quartered one recipe said that you should cut it from the poles like not like through the equator. 
So picture the lime as the globe. Uh-huh. Don't cut it through the equator, through the middle. Uh-huh. Cut it from the poles. So up, oh, and, up and down, okay. end to end. I gotcha. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because then that way it preserves more of the juices. Gotcha. Two ounces of cachaza and one bar spoon of castor sugar, which is finer than granulated sugar. Mm-hmm. It's more attractive than <laughs> granulated sugar. It's more refined, attractive. Just, <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. better. I'm joking. Also, one recipe used simple syrup. Just heads up. So we're going to muddle these limes in the bottom of a robust glass. <laughs> Can you define a robust glass for me? Thick. (laughs) (laughs) It's a thick boy. Uh, Not flimsy. So when you're muddling it, you're not going to put glass (laughs) everywhere. Kendall, can you explain how to muddle, please? Um, You put stuff at the bottom and then you take a stick (laughs) and push it. Think mortar and pestle. But it's, uh, I mean, you could use a mortar and pestle, I guess. But in the glass, <laughs> the glass would be the mortar. Wait, no, I don't know which part's the mortar. Yeah, which... yeah, yeah. The pestle is like the stick part. Yeah. Yeah, the glass is the mortar and the pestle or the stick is <laughs> the same thing. You're using that uh, to push and get the juices out of the lime. And tell the people what kind of stick we have to use today. Uh, I don't know. What did we use? The wooden handle of a mixing spatula. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have that because we don't all, have a mortar and pestle. That's all we got. Got to use what you have. We're going to muddle this because that releases both juices from the skin of the lime and the oils. So you're going to get a lot of good flavor. So you're going to pour the sugar into the bottom of the glass and mix those together. The the actual bodies of the limes what is that the lime pieces <laughs> the actual pieces of the lime are still in the glass yeah. as you're mixing all of this together the lime the sugar and the juice yeah. all together it all is there bim boom bam with your stick and then add your cachaza and fill the glass with ice and stir it all up so a little bit about the spirit we're using cachaza is a brazilian spirit that is similar to a rum agricole is what bartenders call it, but a certain type of rum. It's not exactly rum. Let me just say that. There's been arguments on bartending boards, but (laughs) is it rum? Is it not rum? It's like related to a rum, like a cousin. Cachaza is made from fermented sugarcane juices, whereas rum is made from sugarcane byproducts like molasses. And so it's often confused for rum, but it's not exactly. It's defined by a bold, often vegetal note and peppery spice. So it's not like a gin, which is botanical. And it doesn't taste like, I don't know, I would equate it to flavors of like the tropics and the Caribbean. That's a rum. Uh, it's not like that. It's, it's a bit different. I had never had it. I don't recommend trying it straight. Bartending boards also don't recommend you try it straight. <laughs> Do with that information what you will. Let's go give these a try. All right. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Kendall. Yes. How do we feel about this drink? <laughs> <laughs> so before... I give my review. Uh-huh. I want to preface this with a, just a small thing. I wish you would. Okay. I'm going to. <laughs> uh, when we went to our liquor store, it took us a long time, one, to find the cachaça. Oh, my gosh. We were in there forever. I was very uncomfortable. And when we finally did find it, there was exactly one brand of cachaça, and it was on the bottom <laughs> shelf of the liquor store. So the reason why I'm saying that is I don't think we bought a very high quality cachaca. I don't think so. <laughs> so I want to preface that before I tell you that this was not good. <laughs> I think we did a bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. 
Wow. It was unique. <laughs> unique. Um, it was unique. Unique. <laughs> that was from um, Eurovision, the movie. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. I don't really know what else to say. Uh, it, limey. Yeah, very limey. Pretty tart. Um, I'm not going to get scurvy. The Cachaca definitely had some like earthy tones. Almost tasted like grass a little bit. So that checks out when they said vegetal. Yeah. That uh, checks out. Maybe a little bit of lemongrass. I think even the educated barfly mentions that. No, I didn't taste lemongrass. <laughs> <laughs> I will say a couple things that we didn't do is we didn't use caster sugar. We used granulated sugar. Because that's all we had on hand. Because that's all we had in hand, yeah. Um, in retrospect, I probably could have ground up some of the sugar before we put it in there. So when we first had the drink... I don't think the sugar was really mixed well with the drink because it was still dissolving. Like in the bottom. Yeah, I think a lot of the sugar was in the bottom because it wasn't dissolved. And um, so I think we were mostly just drinking like, cachaca with some lime juice. With a lot of lime. It yeah. was like my eyes are going to pop out of my head. Yeah. So at that point, I would have given it like a three. But <laughs> I will say later on, when the ice melted and I think some of the sugar dissolved, it got much better. Yeah. Still not a drink that I loved. And again, I don't think we had very high quality cachaca anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably bump that up to a five <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll say when we first had this drink, three, when we got through halfway and the ice was melting and the sugar was finally dissolving some, probably more like a five. It wasn't bad. I don't think it's, up there in my favorite drinks. I can see why some people like this, but it's just not for me, I think. So I'm going to give it a five mm -hmm. uh, by the end. What about you? I think I would also give it a five. Now, reading that some people put simple syrup, I think we should try that. Yeah. I'm willing to try it again and tweak it with that or even with trying it with caster sugar or something like that and see if it's better. I think we should also try to get really fresh limes. I think the limes we had were still a couple days in the fridge. Mm. And I don't think we should use the back end of a spatula that we cook <laughs> with. I think we should try to find another instrument. Mm. So I think all of those things compounded. Um, and yeah, I definitely think this is a cheap brand. That was the only one that we could find at this particular liquor store. Maybe we should have gone to a bigger one. We went to a very small liquor store. Yeah, just the one closest to our place. Yeah. The guy who worked at the liquor store saw our sort of smorgasbord that we were buying. And he asked us, are y'all like learning to make cocktails? And we're like, yeah, we're trying a couple classic ones. So the guy was even like, oh, sick, you're making cool stuff. I felt very cool. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff that we don't normally get for this uh whole series You're getting some which stuff. was kind of fun it was fun this i think was a fruitful series yeah. i feel like i understand cocktails a little bit more yeah i enjoyed it i thought it was a really cool nice little break and a nice way to ease ourselves back into podcasting yeah. uh, as we get ready for um season two which season when this two. releases i will be only a month away oh dang We'll be starting up October 3rd. October 3rd. <laughs> uh, and along with that, we wanted to figure out a way for our listeners to join in with us a little bit more with some fun, simple challenges. Mm -hmm. So uh, for our first challenge for the episode one of our season two, we want to get to 20 listeners 20. of that first episode and if we do for each goal that we meet our plan is to release a bonus episode and we're going to do this a little differently we're going to release a bonus episode on our podcast which will be the audio format but we're also planning on releasing a video of that too on a youtube channel Woohoo! so uh that way if you want to see us goofballs doing the challenge on a video we will do it there uh, or if you just want to continue listening to it on the podcast, we'll have both options for you. Woo. Um, I'm not sure the quality of the videos yet because that'll be brand new to us. <laughs> I am not a video producer in the slightest. Yeah, but this we're, is interesting. We're going to give it a shot. I thought that might be a fun challenge. So once again, 
it's going to be 20 listens. Yeah. So basically, the more you listen to us, the more we'll be in your ears. Yep. Or we'll be in your eyeballs (laughs) if you decide (laughs) to watch us. (laughs) That was so disgusting. (laughs) So definitely be sure to let your friends know uh, and share our podcast so that we can keep hitting those goals. Because we have some goofy stuff planned. Like if you want to see us do some silly things. I think that's all I have. So we're just going to continue getting prepped for our season two release October 3rd Mm -hmm. and are excited for everyone to come along that journey with us. Definitely. We're going to do a little bit of traveling. We are. It's going to be great. (laughs) Come with us.